الرحمن الرحيم إن في خلق السماوات والأرض وخلاف الليل والنهار لآية لأولي الألباب سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم The life of a Muslim is extremely unique. The second that a Muslim is born, or in some instances, the second that a Muslim attains the age of responsibility, or the moment that somebody accepts this deen and takes the shahada, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they automatically enter the state of a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One moment, somebody can be completely free, able to do whatever they want, able to go where they want to go, able to eat what they want to eat, able to schedule their time the way they want to schedule their time. And the next moment, by taking one simple statement, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, they now become a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And each one of us are servants. Otherwise, why would we be here? Each of us has work that we could be doing in our offices. We have places that we could be. We have other things that we could schedule. The only reason that we come here is because Allah commanded us to be here and because we are his servants. When he makes a command, we are responsible to fulfill that command that is upon us. That's the only reason for coming here. And if you're here for any other reason, then know that the greatest reason and the greatest of the niyyah is that you come to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the beauty of this deen that as servants, we no longer have a choice in any matter. We wake up in the morning for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah tells us to wake up for the Fajr Salah, we wake up in the morning and we pray, we make wudu, we wash our hands, we wash our faces, we wash our feet, and we pray the prayer the way the Prophet taught us to pray the prayer because we are servants of Allah and because we don't have any other choice. Similarly, all of the deeds of a Muslim in his day. They're all centered around Allah. Everything that we do is a service to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now as servants, this also places us in a very unique position because we no longer have, we lose our ability to have an opinion or to have choices in certain matters. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us what to eat and what not to eat. And therefore we are servants, we have no other choice. We can't eat the meat of a pig because Allah told us we can't eat it. There's no other reason. We can give all the different rational reasons for why you should eat, why you shouldn't eat pork. Oh, there's certain diseases associated with pork. Oh, there are certain bad, you know, uh, there's a high cholesterol associated with pork. But the point remains that even if pork was proved to be the best meat in the world, nobody can eat it because as servants of Allah, we were taught that we cannot eat this meat. Similarly, we don't drink alcohol because we're servants of Allah. We're restricted to what we can drink. We're restricted to what we can eat. We're restricted to when we can sleep. We're restricted to where we can go. Even we are restricted at what we can look at. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us what to look at and what not to look at. We are not supposed to look at the, the, uh, uh, somebody that's not your maham, to look at the, fa- to look at the uh, physical features of the opposite sex, both for men and women. We are not allowed to do that because we are servants of Allah. He has given us this eyesight and now he has commanded us exactly how to use it. Every single breath that we take, there is an aspect that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's an aspect of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's servitude in that breath. The beauty of this is that we live between the fear and the hope and the awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at every given moment in our life, these different aspects of this service, they come out. So we may wake up in the morning, one morning, because we're afraid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We just read about the punishment that he gives to those people who disobey him, to the great hellfire that he has created for those people who refuse to subjugate themselves to his laws, to the, the painful punishment in the grave for those people who decide on their own and don't act from the, the Prophet on them or from Allah. So that's an aspect of fear. Similarly, there's an aspect of hope. We may wake up one morning to perform the service that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed upon us because of the fact that we have hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this enormous jannah. 
that even one moment in that Jannah is more than anything that you can attain in this world if you lived from its beginning to its end. The Jannah is so vast and so diverse that perhaps someday this aspect of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places us further in his slavery. On other days we wake up and we see the sun rising and we see the skies and we look at the trees and we look at all the creation around us and we're in awe that what a supreme creator, how amazing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, that he created each of these individual things that if all the universe came together and tried to create a fly, they wouldn't be able to do it. And how many hundreds of thousands of people in the history of time have tried to study the aspect, different dimensions of the human body. How many billions of dollars are spent and how many millions of people have devoted their lifetime to studying the human body. A one single creation of Allah and yet we know only 1-2% to 2 of what is truly the science behind the human body. Right? They say that knowledge is not, is probably, the knowledge of the world is, of what we have and what exists is probably less than 1%. To this day we're continuing to discover new and unique things about the human body a single aspect of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. So this might be one aspect that first forces us into slavery of Allah. That we know that this creator who created the entire universe and everything that it contains, and where the whole world is gathered together to create even an atom that would not be able to do so, that may be an aspect that forces us further into slavery of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another day we may wake up and we may be shocked to see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us enormous blessings. The fact that we eat one time a day, let alone three times a day. The fact that we have air to breathe. The fact that our eyes work when we wake up in the morning. The fact that we're not sick, that we're healthy. All these things may force us into slavery of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the point remains that no matter what you look at, no matter how you think, no matter where you go, no matter what you do, you are always a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have no choice in the matter. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed for us in the Qur'an, we subjugate ourselves to it and we bow to it. And what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to stay away from, it's exactly the same scenario. We stay away from those things because we have no choice in the matter. This is the ultimate of our deen. It's that simple. If you want to summarize the deen, if you want to summarize the life of the Prophet sallam, it is that he was the, the most submissive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what his sunnah is. That's the definition of the sunnah. The sunnah is a description, a written description, a verbal description of what the most subservient of all of creation, how he reacted to different situations in his daily life. That was the Prophet Sallallahu the greatest of servants, the most true to Allah, the most beloved to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why we study the sunnah. When we see that the Prophet Sallallahu wakes up and reads a particular dua, we know that he read it in complete consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala understanding his life as a servant of Allah and fulfilling every aspect of it. When we see that the Prophet ﷺ preferred to wear a certain color, when we see that he preferred to walk a certain way, when we see that he preferred to stand at certain times and sit at others, these are all signs of the most perfect servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who has earned the highest maqam in this world and who, who will inshallah have the highest maqam in the hereafter. That's why we study his life. That is exactly why we study the sunnah. It's not an academic exercise. It's not a history. It's not a story that we read to our children and say, MashaAllah, look at these people and how they live. It is an, an example that if you want to be a true servant of Allah, if the awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grasps you, if the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grasps you, if hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grasps you, then know that the most perfect of all servants was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that if you want to be the most perfect of servants, you must emulate him in every footstep that he took. This is exactly the lives of the Sahaba. Read the hadith. Every single act that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa did, they emulated it. They looked for it. They searched for it. They knocked on the door of the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and they asked, tell us what did the Prophet eat so we can eat like that. Tell us how he ate so we can eat like that. Tell us what he did at this particular instance and what he did at that particular instance so that we can do exactly that. Why? Because he's the most perfect of servants. We don't worship him, but we know that he was given tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to subjugate himself to Allah in the most perfect way and subsequently we walk in his footsteps. That's the definition of the sunnah. And that should be the model and guide towards our life. In every single instance, and every single challenge that faces this ummah, and every single time of confusion, know that the Prophet ﷺ is the model that you have to return to. 
And if you don't find it in his life, then you'll find it in the lives of his companions. And if you don't find it in the lives of the companions, you'll find it in the lives of the Tabi'in, or the Seba Tabi'in, or the Ulama who came after them, who explicated this deen for us until the end of time. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve all the explications that we have been transmitted. This is the understanding of this Ummah. Whenever there is a time of confusion, and especially nowadays where there's so much confusion, you have to look back to the Qur'an, to the Sunnah, and to the Ulama of this Ummah and understand how they commented on these particular instances. There's no need to go into details. There's no need to sit and talk about particular events because these are general rules. They apply at all times and all places. No matter where you are, no matter who you are, no matter when you live, and no matter what you do for a living, you are subject to the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those people that don't subjugate themselves to it, you can read their stories in the Qur'an. Those are not stories. The ummah that were destroyed before us. This ummah was destroyed for a particular reason. That ummah was destroyed for a particular reason. Are those stories? Fairy tales that we read to our children so that they can be entertained? No. They are signs of the incredible power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That if somebody disobeys him and, re- and refuses to be in his service, then what can he do to a particular group of people? That's exactly what we find in the Qur'an over and over and over again. Nowadays, people have begun to think that they have power equivalent to Allah. That they can hear anything that they want to hear. That they can see anything that they want to see. That they can do anything that they want to do. That they have all the power in the world and they can make any decision that they want. But, the point remains is that Allah is in control. Allah is the only person who can see all, who can hear all, who can do all, who is complete in His justice, who is infinite in His grace. No one can challenge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let the people who decide to challenge Him know that they can never succeed because we have a book full of the history of those people who tried to rise to that level. We have to remember in every footstep that we take that we are servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't make a decision except that he tells us to do it. We don't look at something except that there's benefit in it for us. When we don't look at something and put our eyes down, it's because Allah told us not to look at it. And when we look at something and put our eyes towards it, it's because the Prophet ﷺ enjoyed to look at that, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to look at such things. This is the life of a mu'min. This is the life of the people who subjugate themselves to the service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq in these difficult times to understand what it means to be a servant of Allah, to subjugate our lives to all the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to emulate our lives according to the greatest model of service, namely that of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa akhira da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.